Hey everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting May 19th, 2014. So let's jump right in with the three InfoSec security stories this week, starting with what I suspect is the biggest security media story this week, but not necessarily my biggest story. And that is the big eBay breach. During the week, we learned that eBay's network was breached. Apparently, attackers somehow got access to some of eBay's employees' credentials. They used those credentials to steal 145 million user records. And these records included things like your username, your hashed password, your address, your email address, your date of birth, and your phone number, and other personally identifiable information, so some bad information. On top of that, eBay doesn't really say how they hashed or stored their password. They say they were encrypted, but we don't know if it was with a strong algorithm or if they were salted. So you have to worry that the attackers might be able to crack your password. Now eBay has said this breach happened sometime back between February and March, so it's taken quite a long time for eBay to disclose it, and a lot of security experts don't think eBay's followed a very good disclosure policy. So, if you're an eBay user, how do you protect yourself? Well, it's pretty typical. You need to make sure to change your password as soon as possible if you have an eBay account. And when you change your password, be sure to remember those tips from Password Day. And those tips are use a strong password and do not use the same password on every website. The easiest way to use strong, different passwords everywhere is by taking advantage of a password vault. So, if you're an eBay user, be sure to change your password, and if there's any updates to the story, we'll be sure to share them in the future. Another story from the week, which I actually think has a higher severity than the eBay story, was a new zero-day vulnerability in Internet Explorer 8. HP has this thing called the Zero Day Initiative, where they gather zero day exploits from researchers, or they pay for zero day exploits, and then they go through a disclosure process internally where they share those exploits with the vendor, give them time to patch, and then release the details about the exploit. In any case, the Zero Day Initiative, or ZDI, released details for a zero day IE exploit or vulnerability this week. Uh, essentially, it was a use after free vulnerability in a particular particular web object, see markup, and a bad guy could create a drive-by download site that took advantage of the flaw in this particular object to execute code on your computer. And the big news here is ZDI released details about this vulnerability before Microsoft has actually patched it. And according to them, they've known about this vulnerability for six months, and they've shared the details, and Microsoft has not reacted in a very timely manner, so they decided to disclose this flaw. Since then, Microsoft has said they're well aware of this vulnerability and they do plan to fix it. But right now, the details about the vulnerability are, are out for the public for attackers to figure out. Now, the only good news in this story is there's no known exploit code in the public for this vulnerability yet, so attackers will still have to figure out how to exploit it based on ZDI's details. But it is a pretty big deal, and there's attackers out there that will be able to figure out this flaw. So if you're an Internet Explorer user, what can you do today? Well, first of all, the flaw only affects Internet Explorer 8, so you could upgrade to a different version of Internet Explorer. Another quick takeaway is to use Microsoft's EMET tool. I've talked about it in the past in other videos. I'll post a link to it in the blog post associated with this video. But if you install it, it'll be harder for attackers to exploit these type of memory corruption vulnerabilities. And one final mitigating tip is if you put Internet Explorer in high security mode, it's going to deactivate Active Scripting and ActiveX by default, which will make it harder for attackers to exploit this kind of flaw. In any case, if you use IE8, follow some of these mitigation tips, and we'll be sure to update you as soon as Microsoft releases a patch. 
So the final story this week, and in my opinion, one of the most interesting, is the news that the U.S. government has finally officially accused Chinese military actors of hijacking private companies or hacking private companies. During the week, the Department of Justice officially charged five military actors from China for actually hacking private organizations in the U.S. And according to the DOJ, or the Department of Justice, these five named actors are part of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, part of that Unit 61398 that Mandiant's APT-1 report cited a few months ago. And they actually name these actors and give some specific cases, such as a company called Solar Winds that creates solar panels, and something called Westinghouse, uh, some nuclear and, and metal companies. How these five actors actually stole intellectual property from these organizations during a time when these organizations were trying to get into business. And the result, according to the DOJ, was some U.S. businesses did not succeed because Chinese businesses were able to underbid them. In any case, this caused quite a big uproar. And of course, uh, later on in the week, China actually said that none of this was true. These allegations are all false and that the U.S. is actually hypocritical because they're doing cyber attacks on China as well. Now, the U.S. has always stated that one difference between their cyber espionage is they're actually targeting foreign intelligence organizations to do hacking that will help in, uh, increase the U.S.'s uh, security as a, a country. However, they allege that the Chinese hacking is actually stealing trade secrets that give China a leg up in business and commerce and things like that. In any case, this is a really interesting story. It proves that cyber attacks or hacking or whatever you want to call it has risen to the, the attention of global geopolitical organizations. Whether it's right to hack other countries for cyber espionage or whether it's okay to attack private businesses to steal trade secrets, this is something we have to figure out. And I suspect it's going to continue to become an issue in the future. Hopefully one day the United Nations will actually bring this to a global attention and will try to create some sort of rules around these sort of cyber attacks in the same way they try to create rules around normal physical wars. So that's all I have for you for this week, but it's been a pretty busy security news week, so be sure to check out the reference section to other interesting stories, which I'll post on the WatchGuard Security Center blog. If you haven't actually joined WatchGuard Security Center, be sure to subscribe to that blog. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.